In this lecture, we'll talk about elements and attributes. There are different types of elements, but the two most important ones are block and inline. Block elements flow from top to bottom and generate a line break before and after the element without making a space in between, such as the div, for example. So if we have two divs in an HTML document, what we see in the browser is two divs under each other and not next to one another. Inline elements flow from left to right and don't generate a line break before or after the element, but create a space between each two elements. For example, the span. So if we have two spans in an HTML document, when that document is opened in the browser, we see the spans next to one another and not under each other. We also see a small space between the two spans. The image is also another example of an element that behaves in line. It's actually a block inline element as we'll see in the next slide. Block level elements. Some block level elements can contain both block and inline elements such as the div, while others can only contain inline elements such as the p. They can have dimensions such as width and height. And some examples of block level elements are the following. H1 through H6. H1 stands for first level heading, H2 stands for second level heading, third level heading, and so on until H6. Think of these as titles. So H1 is bigger, H2 is slightly smaller, H3 is smaller, and so on, and the smallest title is H6. The div is the generic block, so think of it as a container that contains other elements. Think of it as a box um, to create a, a good layout, so the generic block. The P is for paragraph. The UL is for unordered list, which means when you open the page in the browser, you'll get a list with bullet points. The ordered list, the second, the one after UL, the OL, stands for ordered list. You will get a list with numbers, so one, two, three, four, and so forth. For example, if you have the words um, spring, summer, fall, one, spring, two, summer, three, fall, that's what you'll see. And the, the LI stands for list. The UL and the OL elements contain the LI. So every time the UL element opens, it contains the LI, which is basically the set of lists. So if you have spring, summer, fall, the spring, the word spring is in an LI, the word summer is in an LI, the word fall is in an LI. We'll see examples of those when we start working on our website today. The block quote will indent text, the HR will uh, draw a horizontal line, the table will create a table, and there are many other block level elements, but these are but a few. This is an example of how the syntax can be written. In this example, we have the div element that is opened, and then it closes. We know that it closes because of this forward slash, and it has two children, the P element and the image element. We know that the P and the image are the children of the div element because of two things. The first is because the div closes after the P and the image, and the second is because of this visual indication, which is an indentation. So every time you write syntax and there's an element that is nested or that is inside another element, by all means indent so that in the future when you open the file, it's much easier to understand what element is the child of which parent. So the div element opens and closes. It contains a P element, which basically is a phrase that says MSU is a great university. After the P is an image, which happens to be calling an image called happy.png and the alt basically is saying happy face. What the alt does is in case the image took time to load this phrase will appear until the image loads. And um, source and alt are attributes but we'll discuss those in the later slides. 
Examples of new HTML5 block level elements are the header, footer, section, nav. Um, there are others, of course. The header, we all know that the header usually in a website is at the top, with, it contains a navigation, the logo of the company or service, and so forth. The footer is at the bottom of the page, it contains copyright information, um, contact information. Uh, the nav um, uh, element is for the navigation, which is sometimes in the header, sometimes it's in a sidebar, and so forth. The section element is to create sections. So imagine the homepage of a website, which is divided into three sections, for example, like the intro section, the news section, the contact section, uh, each section having one heading, um, so one title, if you will. Inline elements are usually used with text. They can only nest other inline elements, but not block elements. And they cannot be assigned dimensions except as defined by their content which means if we have a word, for example, such as hello, which is 12 pixels, it is that big. If it's 48 pixels, it's that much bigger. But we cannot assign a width and a height dimension to an inline element. They allow a limited range of styling options, such as changing colors, fonts, and so forth. Examples of inline elements are the span, the EM, the break, the A, and there are others. The span is the generic inline. It is used to highlight the beginning and ending of a word, for example. So if we have a paragraph and we want one word to be of a different color, we place that word within a span, for example. Uh, the EM stands for emphasis, so it's to italicize. The BR is to make a break, so if we want to force a word to go on the second line, we use the break element. The A is to make a link, so any button that's linking to a different page, that's when we use the A element. An example is the span element, which opens and closes. In this case, it's a parent and it's nesting the A element. And we know it's a parent because um, it closes after the A element, which opens here and closes in the end. And also there's this indentation, which basically says that the A is the child of the span. In turn, the A is an inline element, and span is an inline element. It can only nest inline elements, so we cannot nest a div within a span. We cannot nest a P within a span, but we can nest an A within a span. So remember that the A is the element, and then there's a space, and then comes the attribute. The attribute in this case is href. We'll discuss attributes in the coming slides, but just to define what this line of code is saying, a is the element space attribute equals a value between quotation marks, and then we close the a element with the forward slash. The image is a special kind of element. It is a block inline element. It's block because it can have dimensions. We can assign a width and a height to an image but it's inline because its behavior is inline. It flows from left to right as opposed to from top to bottom. Examples of new HTML5 inline elements are audio and video. And now let's go to the W3C website. So if I type this URL and obviously you have the file, the PowerPoint file, you can take this URL and paste it in your browser and let's see let's take a look at some of the block and inline level elements I already have the page open right here and it's basically a list of all the elements um, let's look for example at div and you know it looks um, obscure and there's a lot to read but it's actually quite clear it starts with defining what the element is. The div element is a generic container for flow content that by itself does not represent anything. In other words, think of the div as a container. If it contains nothing, it's um, a thin, transparent, empty line. So it's something that doesn't exist. So unless the div contains something or unless it has dimensions and the color, you won't see anything on the browser. 
Um, what else can we read? You can scroll down, uh, read about the permitted attributes, additional constraints, and so on. Tag omission. It says a div element must have both a start and an end, end tag, which means the div element is one of those elements that must close by all means. Let's look at more elements, such as the break, for example. The break element represents a line break, so you can push a word or, a, or an entire paragraph down. Um, tag omission, the break element, is a void element. We can also call them empty elements, which means um, a break element must have a start tag, but must not have an end tag, like the meta, like the link, like the image. So all of these are void or empty elements. The A, the A is a hyperlink. So we use the A, the A element represents a hyperlink. We use it to link any button to a different page. 